Welcome to another presentation from the CV Academics Foundation, home of the AMP Honors Program. Hello, AMP Honors Program, and welcome back. Today we have another special guest, Dr. John Picari, who is on our advisory board. He's also an exercise and sports science professor at University of Wisconsin La Crosse, where he is also the program director of the Clinical Exercise Science Program, which is a graduate school program. So Dr. Picari, thank you very much for taking the time to speak with us today. My pleasure. So we're just gonna jump right into it. Um, tell us a little bit about how you got where you are today. Um, and if you had the opportunity, would you change anything? Would you go a different path? Would you go a different path within healthcare? Um, just from your experiences. Yeah, I guess I'll start it off in reverse. Uh, would, I, would I ever do anything differently? No, I think I've been, been very, very fortunate in my, in my career path. Um, I you know, love what I do. I've been at the university 32 years. Uh, I do a combination of teaching. We do research. Uh, I run our on-campus cardiac rehab program. So uh, I, don't, I don't think I'd change a thing in all honesty. Uh, how I ended up getting here, uh, almost by mistake. Um, you know, coming out of high school, uh, I was a jock. Uh, you know, small town, high school jock. Uh, supposed to go to the University of Massachusetts and believe it or not, play football at, you know, at 5'10", 170 pounds. Uh, but I had some orthopedic issues my senior year of high school, my, you know, spring of my senior year of high school. Um, so I ended up going to a community college and my original career path was going to be a game warden. Uh, we had a family friend who was a game warden and I said, that's, that's pretty cool. So I was supposed to go to University of Massachusetts, play football. And I was all signed up for coursework um, to be leading in the sciences toward a, a degree in wildlife management. Um, I had some health issues, ended up having uh, some orthopedic surgery. Um, and then during that time, a friend of mine who I used to coach with uh, during the summers got a job as an athletic trainer for the New England Patriots. I'm from, I'm from Massachusetts, so from the from New England Patriots. So I'm like, Wow, that'd be pretty cool. It's like I did it, ended up with my orthopedic issues. I couldn't, you know, play football anymore. So I'm like, boy, that'd, that'd be pretty cool. I'd be an athletic trainer. So I took, you know, two years at a community college, uh, ended up transferring to Springfield College, which had a very good program in athletic training. Well, I didn't get, as a transfer student, I didn't get into athletic training. So I went into um, uh, ex uh, physical education uh, and corporate wellness or corporate fitness. Um, but I finished a semester early, so I had an extra semester to take. So I ended up taking a course in cardiac rehabilitation. And in the back of my mind, I'd always had a fascination with the cardiovascular system and the heart and all that kind of stuff. So I'd almost had thought about becoming a cardiologist. And then I'm like, wow, I don't want to go to school for 12 or 15 years to be a cardiologist. I'd rather be in cardiac rehab. So I, you know, when I took this course, it really you know, piqued my interest in becoming going into the field of cardiac rehab, which is a good bridge between physical education uh, and cardiology. So I ended up coming out to um, University of Wisconsin La Crosse, which has the first master's program um, in the degree was in actually adult fitness cardiac rehabilitation. So I came out, got my master's degree here. Um, and then one of my professors here uh, actually consulted to a cruise line. And this was back in the early 80s. So the cruise lines were just starting fitness programs. So I went and worked on a cruise ship for two years of all things in, you know, in fitness. But he said, I'll only let you go and work on a cruise ship if you agree to go back and get your PhD after a year. Well, I convinced him to let me work two years. So I back, basically worked on a cruise ship for Norwegian Cruise Line for two years, then went back and got my PhD in exercise and sports science at the University of Massachusetts uh, in Amherst. So then when I started looking for jobs, um, I had several offers, one at LSU, one at the University of Richmond, one at Springfield College, where I got my undergraduate degree. Um, and then the job opened up actually here in La Crosse in the same graduate program um, that I got my master's in. And it just seemed to have the best blend of both uh, academia, it had a graduate program, had a great national reputation. Um, so I ended up, you know, coming here as my first job uh, as a PhD and I've been here 32 years, never left. So it's kind of a, you know, really a kind of a bendy, a bendy 
uh, path to say the least, but uh, I ended up, I think, where I was supposed to end up. Yeah, I don't think you're alone in uh, the Bendy path. I think uh, the more you talk to more people, uh, a lot of people's paths seem to, to kind of take twists and turns like that. But like you said, you end up where you feel you're supposed to be in the end. Yeah. Were there any Absolutely. kind of, uh, I know taking the, the cardiac rehab course was kind of something that piqued your interest. Was there anything that was kind of an aha moment or you're like, this is, this is where I'm supposed to be. This is it. Everything's making sense. Everything's clicking for me. Um, again, I'm, I'm not sure there's any specific moment. It's just, I've always had an interest. Even when I went, I went to a community college, even back then I had a, just a fascination with the heart and the cardiovascular system. And I remember we had a, a speech class in, in my first year of um, undergraduate school. This, this was at a community college. And I gave, I gave a talk on cardiac anatomy. We could give it on anything, but I was just always fascinated and just, that was the first speech I ever gave you know, up, up in front of people, you know, in front of a classroom. Um, but that kind of just, it really got me interested in this, in this whole field. And I've always just had that just innate desire or interest in, uh, in the sciences, specifically cardiology type stuff. And I think that speaks to the rest of your career. That interest keeps you pushing and keeps you um, on that cutting edge. And I think that's, that's part of the reason you are where you are today. Yeah. Um, so with that being said, you've given um, so much to so many students over the years. And I'm sure if we reached out to them, there'd be hundreds of emails pouring in as to, as to how you gave back to students and what you gave them. Are there any students that specifically stand out in your mind? Well, I've been here 32 years. I can think of a couple you know, specifically. One would be um, a student by the name of Jordan, Jordan Becker. Uh, he was here, every, seemed like everybody was here 10 to 12 years ago, but he was here probably 10 to 12 years ago. Um, <laughs> he, was a, he was a former athlete. Uh, he was a quarterback, quarterback coming out of college. And I, I just remember he just had a quiet confidence about him and just that just a, he was a born leader. Um, he didn't get caught up in all of the, the petty stuff that can be, you know, we have a cohort of 15 students every year. He didn't get caught up in just a petty BS or infighting that, that sometimes can occur when you have a, a group of students. Um, and he had, a, he had something in mind. He, he had a path he wanted to take. He ended up going, you know, uh, you know, being in that program, was voted the number one student in the class, and then eventually went on and got a PA degree. But he just had that, he had that quiet confidence and leadership about him that you knew he was going to go on to do greater things. And, you know, he had the intelligence to do whatever he wanted. I mean, I remember writing a recommendation for him for, he ended up, again, for PA school. And I just said, here's someone that could be anything he wants in this world. He has the personality, he has the intelligence, uh, the maturity, the judgment to do whatever he wants. And then one other gal, uh, her name was Mariah Cress, and she was here four or five years ago. Um, and again, much, much like Maddie, who's one of the super mentors, I'm not sure if they know Maddie, but she had the personality and the drive to do anything she wants in this world. Um, she's very intelligent. But the thing that impressed me about Mariah is I can never figure out how she had time to do all the things she did in a day. I mean, one, she was an A student academically. She volunteered at the Boys and Girls Club. Uh, she'd help people out in our program, some of our old, older participants in our on-campus cardiac rehab program. She would help them with chores around the house. She had two jobs off campus. I don't know how she, she fit it all in, but it's the same type of thing. She had just a drive and a motivation that you don't see in everybody. Um, and coincidentally, she is also, she just finished her PA degree. She went on to start working on a PhD, didn't really work out. She didn't find it as interesting as she, she thought it would. Uh, she got into a PA program and just finished, I think, probably, I think almost two, just two weeks ago. So very, very recently, but again, both of them had just the intangibles that you knew they're going to be successful, whether no matter what they did or whatever career path they chose, you know. So I think those are two I can remember most most vividly or most that stuck out. Hmm. Do you still keep in touch with a lot of students? Uh, quite a few. I mean, still probably, you know, we have 15 students a year. I've been here 32 years. That's a lot of students. Yeah. Um, but we still go to our, we take all of our students every year 
to our state cardiac rehab convention uh, down in, you know, wherever, wherever it is in Wisconsin. So we see a lot of our former students, probably 75% of our students stay in cardiac rehabilitation or clinical exercise physiology. So we see a lot of them at that time. Um, also, I, I love to hunt and fish. I have one friend out in Montana, Mike McNamara, who's in you know, my first graduate class here in 1990, um, I still go fishing out there almost every year out in Montana. Uh, I got another friend, former student, um, Pat Walter, who's in Jamestown, North Dakota. And boy, we went, I went duck and deer hunting out there for 20 or 25 years. Uh, I got a friend up in um, Anchorage, Alaska, and I try to go you know, salmon fishing almost every year. And I've managed to do it pretty much every year. And then we got another, another student, uh, Jonah Lodig down in Viroqua. And I mean, for the last 20 years, we always go muzzleloader hunting together. So he, you know, he just sent me a text uh, wanting to know muzzleloader seasons in about a week and a half. Want to know if I'm going to go, you know, muzzleloading hunting. So um, I keep in track, you know, pretty close contact with probably six to ten people, mostly from uh, a hunting and fishing point of view. But um, it just seemed like whenever our annual cardiac rehab convention or sports medicine convention is in different places around the country, we always manage to have like a uh, some sort of like an alumni get together, whether it be we've got a number of students out in Eugene, Oregon, we've got a number of people in Denver, Colorado area. Uh, so we got students all over the country and uh, we try to get together and stay in touch with as many people as possible. But uh, I think just the nature of our graduate program, you know, we get so close to the students, we do a lot socially um, to try to, you know, buoy, buoy people's spirits. Uh, mm -hmm. You get a different a different relationship with, with students that you don't get at the undergraduate level. Yeah, absolutely. It's a smaller group. You get to know them better. How does that make you feel when you see those students out and representing other, other organizations now, but knowing they came from UWL and kind of knowing where they were and, and where they are now? Uh, it makes you feel great. I mean, one of the, one of the, I gave a talk a couple of years ago up in Winona. One of our former students runs the program in cardiac rehab up in Winona. They have an undergraduate program and it's actually in cardiac rehabilitation. And she said, you know, what's the thing you're proudest of? And I think, you know, it's nice that when we get accolades, you know, if we win some national award or some sort of recognition, but I always said, I said, the thing that makes me happiest is when I see my students doing those things and becoming president of state cardiac rehab association or doing things and being successful. And I think that's the sign of any any good professor, any good professionals, you want the people that you work with or the people that you've trained to aspire and attain better things or bigger things than you do. Yeah. Um, switching gears a little bit here, uh, back to you. You kind of, you went through your education and then you got the job at, at UWL as a program director. Um, and then there's been this, this big time where you, you've been in charge Talk to me a little bit about um, kind of what your continuing education looked like throughout that process. Yeah, I mean, I think it's, you know, education is, is never ending. I mean, I think people don't realize when, when you stand up in front of the classroom, especially at the graduate level, uh, you, have, you have to have a deeper understanding. I mean, I think people, they just see us in the classroom. Sometimes they don't realize that, boy, for every hour you stand in front of a classroom, a lot of times you're spending three, four hours behind the scenes preparing, you know, preparing lectures, updating lectures. I read probably five or six different journals or subscribe to five or six different journals every month, the newsletters. Um, you know, every year, you know, we go to typically two conferences. One is the American College of Sports Medicine, uh, and the other one is the American Association of Cardiovascular and Pulmonary Rehab. So those are our two major organizations. So we, you know, we go to those every year. Um, and again, you know, a lot of it, you get to be my age, you know, a lot of it is just, if you pick up a couple little tidbits of information, but to see your friends, they kind of recharge your battery. And um, I, don't, I don't think people realize how much reading and, and continuing education we do, even as, even as full, full professors. Uh, I mean, education never stops. The field of, you know, we're in cardiac rehab. Uh, medications change, procedures changes, training technique changes, um, you know, and again, we update as a result, you know, up to, I update my classes 
you know, realistically about 5% every year. I mean, you, you have to have the latest information, the latest procedures. So it's, it's a never, it never ends, you know. Think, it also makes it exciting too. Yeah, I think that's something that going back and kind of talking about how you got into this and having that, um, I think it ties into the, the students that stand on your mind too, having that curiosity, that continual want to learn um, I think is, is, a, is a trait that, that makes you a very good professor and, and allows you to be able to do what you've done and pass on and have students do what they've done. Um, so that's well, I think the, the one thing we always talk about too is you, you can't teach, every, teach people everything they need to know about your field. Our, ours is a one year program. I mean, they're on campus for a year, then you do a three month internship. Our, the biggest thing we do is try to get them excited about the field and make them lifelong learners. Uh, we, try to, we try to create an itch where they don't take things at face value. It's not like, oh, you know, we like, why is that? You know, what, what's the mechanism behind that? Why does that medication work? Why does that procedure work? You know, why is someone getting that procedure versus this other procedure? And it, it's, it's, a, you know, it's just, again, we try to create an itch so people can think for themselves and want to have the desire. I mean, you're not working in a factory. Um, you're not working and just, you're working with people, you're making decisions and you got to be prepared to make those decisions because you know, a lot of times it's life and death decisions. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so let's talk a little bit about your role as an advisory board member. So you are an advisory board. Um, talk to me a little bit about why you decided this is something that you wanted to be a part of and kind of what you hope to build uh, with this community you have, with the students we have, and with, with the other cogs you have on the advisory board? I, I think just to, to share, you know, share our expertise and just share, you, uh, you, you can be anything you want in this world. I mean, if, if, you put, if, you put in, if you put in the work, you can be anything you want. They always say that, you know, the hardest part about, uh, and nobody flunks out of med school, you know, they always say. Um, the hardest part about med school is getting in. Right, so I think you know ma making a making a plan and constantly moving forward, okay, is is where is where it's all at to be successful. Try to figure out where you want to go, and then just just taking little steps across the way. So you're always making forward progress. I mean, I think that's the thing I would like to share to people is you can be anything you want, but it's not going to happen overnight. It's going to happen. It's not going to happen mysteriously. You know, just. You know, and you can, you can get ideas by you know, being part of this or, you know, being part of the AMP program, talking to people, job shadowing people, picking people's brains, asking questions, and those type of things. And just to make people realize that you can attain anything you want if, you put it, if you're willing to put in the work and ask the right questions and, um, and be proactive. It's not going to come to people sit back and wait, right? And you, you've got you've to be moving forward. Yeah, well, I think that's a great piece of advice. Um, do you have any other advice for students looking to get into the healthcare field, whether it's high school, undergraduate? Um, you touched on a little piece there that is a little difficult now with what we're going through in the pandemic and getting out there and getting experience, getting your hands into it and seeing if this is what you want to do. Um, do you have anything for students and then specifically for students that are trying to get into the healthcare field during COVID that are trying to get these jobs shadowing and figure out if this is what they want to do, but the opportunities aren't as plentiful as they, as they once were. Yeah. I don't know if I have any prophetic things to say, just be, I mean, COVID has been, it, it's made us all, it's just making us all crazy in terms of trying to deliver the same type of content. Um, but I, the biggest thing is if you're trying to get into the healthcare field, I mean, well, I think it takes a certain type of person to be in the healthcare field. I mean, we're always looking for, we call them people, people, right? Um, but again, I think the thing is you're making a life, you're making a life decision as to what you want to do, ideally the rest of your life. And if you're going to do that, I think you want to make sure it's something you enjoy. Um, so we, we encourage our students, um, you know, talk to people, get job shadow people the best you can, but figure out if, if people like their job. Um, you know, there are jobs, you know, at least in the field I'm in, there's jobs that, that would pay a heck of a lot more money. But, you know, um, you know, we come in, we laugh every day, we have a great time, we have a lot of variety. So you want to make sure you're doing something you enjoy. And the only way to do, do that is talk to people who are doing it and see if they're enjoying it more than just a paycheck. Because if you're going to work someplace for 30, or 35, or 40 years, boy, you, you, you want to be in something you enjoy. Because 
uh, when you die, they're not going to put on your tombstone what your checking account balance was. You know, I mean, you want to, you want to enjoy life. Uh, you want to enjoy the people you work with. You want to enjoy the field you're working with. And that just comes to, you know, doing the back, you know, doing the homework behind the scenes to see you know, if you want to do that. You know, we get a number of people in our field that, that, that come into us as students who are pre-PT. But then once they started job shadowing in PT, realized that really wasn't a, I can't see myself doing that for the rest of my life. And again, not that you might do it for the rest of your life, because I think this generation, sometimes you, you change midstream. You work someplace five or 10 years and you say, I'm going to take a different path. And those, those opportunities are available to you. But I think um, so we get a lot of people who are you know, pre-PT, maybe pre-OT, that said, I'd rather do what you guys do in cardiac rehab. Okay, we can, we can make it really make a difference. Um, they really enjoy working with the older population or people who have had health issues um, to, to really make a difference in their life. And we get people you know, in better shape than they've been in in 20 or 30 years when they start exercising, doing the right things nutritionally in, in that way. So. Yeah, well, thank you very much for that. Um, I don't have any other questions for you. Do you have anything else that you want to the students on the platform to hear anything else you want to, you want to get out there? No, I just think that this is a great opportunity. I mean, the, the things that are available with the, the AMP program um, just is a great opportunity for people to help plot the course. Uh, I think there's a lot of information on the website, you know, things like this. You can, you can pick people's brains. Uh, I think you have the super mentors like yourself and others uh, who are going to help guide them and just, you know, you know listen, you know, listen to as much of that as you can. I think in the healthcare field is amazingly rewarding. I think it takes a certain type of person to work in the healthcare field. Um, and you may decide after doing all this, it might not be for you, you know? Um, so it's a decision to make, but don't feel bad about your decisions. If you feel it, it is the right path, you'll, you'll never be happier. I mean, I think, uh, but you may, you may come to the other conclusion too and say, you know, I would rather work in a different, I might work in healthcare administration as opposed to, which is again healthcare, but it's not the hands-on thing that we typically view as, as healthcare. Yeah. Uh, but I think it'll help you guide you to your individual strengths, and that's what you want to ultimately be work toward and be happy with. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much for for giving us your time and answering some questions about your career and and um, giving us a little advice for the students who are just starting out their their healthcare careers and maybe not even sure if healthcare is for them. Um, but on behalf of the whole CVA team, we really want to thank you. Um, you do so much for us and as an advisory board member, and, and we feel really blessed to, to have you as a part of, of AMP and, um, again, to, to be able to sit down and, and get video and content out there like this for our students. So um, people like you are, are what make this platform great. So thank you very much for My pleasure. time to sit down with us. Okay, take care. This has been a presentation of the CV Academics Foundation, home of the AMP Honors Program.